Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting, July 17, 2018, at 7.05 at the municipal offices here in Deerfield meeting room. Uh, first, we'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance, so if you please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to... Excuse me? Being recorded? Oh, yes, this meeting's being recorded. Um, so we might as well dive right into these regulations that we're talking about. Um, so what, what we have in, you want to go over what we have in front of us? If you want me to. Yes, just to, just to be sure. Just to be sure. So do you want so, me to? Uh, you have your agenda. Then you yep. have, uh, you have what Carolyn handed out at the last meeting, which. Which I, is I, a mistake. Because that was a, a bylaw. It, it, I, yeah. Go it was ahead. a bylaw. say something about it. Okay. No, it, Dick and I met on the bylaw, not regulations. So, I have Board but, of Health regulations. So are we but what going you passed out is regulations, not a bylaw. No, um, no it yeah, was a well, bylaw. General bylaws. I mean, regulations. It, this was decided not to do that. correct. Right, mm -hmm. and we got mixed up in our paperwork. So we're not going to. Well, some of the things in here are relevant. Okay. So when we go over a Board of Health regulations, we can just pull out from the model bylaw what we thought was good. All right. Okay. Because there are there are certain things, but this this is set up to be a general bylaw versus Board of Health. And um, I mean Dick and I were, were confused. We said we thought there should be more reference to Board of Health. So I mean it should have dawned on us really. So this is all that we have so, currently. Can I look I just excuse me one second. Just sure. me. Um so So what you should also have in front of you then is the um, two different uh, bylaws. One is a generic one, the Mass Association of Health Boards, which I sent to you a few weeks ago. And the other is the one the city of Northampton adopted, Board of Health Regulations. I, I don't think I have the Northampton one. Okay. I have the generic one. Okay. Which is what we were working off before. Before I, Dick and I met on the bylaw, general bylaw one. Okay. And I have two copies here, so maybe. All right, so if you want that Northampton one, let me know. I do. Okay. That was maybe. adopted before the MAHB came out with theirs. You also have the Leicester um, Post Community Agreement. They're the first yeah. community to be licensed by the. CCC and a generic host community agreement actually provided by council. Um, and then we've got uh, several host agreements sent to me this morning, I think it was, by is Sons. This is, the one? this is Lester. Yeah, no. no you don't have the Northampton yeah, one? This is... I don't have it either. Okay, you did. Sorry. Okay. We'll get that to you. And then the other, the other thing is these uh, multiple host community agreements that Sun's Mass, and I believe it was this morning, correct? Okay. Huh. All right, where do you want to start? Well, um, I feel terrible that I didn't, uh, Dick and I hadn't had a chance to review it, so why don't we take the generic one and just go over it, because um, then we can pull in a couple of the things that um, Dick and I really particularly liked out of the general bylaw. For the host agreement, you mean? No, the, oh. for the regs, because that's our first okay. thing. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. We're, we're going to just review the Board of Health regulations, and we're going to take it from the generic one, because I don't have the Northampton one anyway. So um, there's a couple things in the general bylaw that Dick and I particularly liked. Um, so we're going to try to mesh them. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. We're, we're going to try to combine the generic 
with the bylaw that Dick and I had already reviewed, the few things that we liked out of the a bylaw that we reviewed um, that was from town council as a general bylaw, and we're trying to incorporate it to the Board of Health regulations, which is a separate from a general bylaw. And these are the ones that we got from Lisa? Yes. Basically, um, the Board of Health bylaw is like if you were selling cigarettes, it's regards age, you know, um, underage sales and things like that. Well, what, what were the things that you liked out of the, those bylaws? Um, and we, we can see if we, we can talked find about it here. nuisance, and um, we wanted personnel. Um, protection for the people that were working there, um, some review of, of um, there was the ability to review personal protection or um, records that, in other words, the employees wouldn't be overcome from right. smells and stuff like that. There would be a way to protect the personal, the employees of the, what, marijuana, whatever. And we wanted to include best practice training um, the bylaw, general bylaw reference tips training, which um, I did years ago, and that's definitely alcohol related, but so we replaced that with best practice training, including serve safe if they were going to have um, edibles on, and so I wanted to make sure we included that in our general bylaw, because again, that's um, requiring the um, marijuana establishment to have that training, you know, employees to have that training. Um, Before you go too far, how would we go about monitoring, you know, the um, effectiveness of what other, what procedures they would put in place to protect the employees from, you know? The, well, if they, they would do records like, you know, um, say a, a quarterly blood test or something, and the um, D Dick, when he does random inspections, would be able to see the um, records would be inspector records, that kind of stuff. I mean, that would be something that we'd work out with. Well, blood tests wouldn't, because um, well, the employee I, I maybe right. I'm not sure how you do it, but a blood test wouldn't work because the client may may be using already. Let alone, you know. It's some way to monitor that they don't have like sky high right, but exposure. How can, are we? I, Oh, we're not qualified to really get into that. No, but they would be required to have some ways that it would, okay. they, the workers would be monitored so that they would not have unintentional exposure. I ask a question of clarification. Um, where is this, in a Board of Health reg or in a host agreement? Where would you put this? This, this would be in our, we, we're, t we were referencing the general bylaw, but we would put it in our Board of Health bylaw. So that our Board of Health inspector, whoever's doing the inspections, would have the ability to check the records. And they would just have some kind of maintenance of records to show that um, somebody is monitoring. So it's a worker safety thing, is that what you're yes. saying? Yes. Yes, it would be worker safety. I'm not sure, since the federal government is not legal, that you wouldn't have OSHA over, you know, overseeing this. Mm -hmm. So this is why we were concerned that we would want to make sure our, the employees are safe. There's some kind of safety oversight. I think, yeah, I think there might be requirements the CCC has around right. that, but with the attorneys in the audience, I'm sure they can speak to that issue. But we just wanted to make sure that we were checking. Um, so we wanted that ability, and the um, and then, like I said, the a best practice training. I, I don't want to reference tips, which is referenced in the general bylaw. We want to do whatever is industry. I mean, the industry has been around, so there has to be some kind of best practices. Mm -hmm. So we would recommend that they take the best practice training that would ensure that they're not selling to underage kids. And instead of re referencing, instead of making them take tips, which is so alcohol related, you would be having the same kind of training so that you could make sure that you're checking, you know, kids and mm -hmm. 
you know, so you're not selling to people that is inappropriate. And then um, a serve safe course if, if they're involved with edibles. You know, food certification. That, I mean, that's standard. So you'd want to make sure you had standard training. Correct. Um, it's, you know, I forget how many hours it is because I've, I've done it twice now, but it's for five years at a time. And you just, it's a standard course. It's like four nights or something, you know, four three hour sessions or something. Where do we, do we make the obligation to the applicants to come up with, like you say, this best practices thing? Since it is a relatively new uh, industry, you know, if we just use the term best practices, they could say, well, what we've been doing is the best practice. How do we well, I think it, what, I, what we wanted to make sure is that they had appropriate awareness of selling to underage children, okay. in my case. I mean, that was my major concern. There must be some, some case um, and policies put forth in, you know, Colorado, right? It, There's got to be something out there that yeah. would suffice for a TIPS training. I don't want to yeah. put TIPS on right. because it's, all it's inappropriate based. training, other than that they do go over extensively how to selling card. how to card correctly, right? How to not to sell to inter inappropriate aged people and inappropriate I mean, if people are in already, um, you know, drunk, you don't sell it to them. But this is the kind of thing that we, we just put down a general thing rather than tips. Okay. Carolyn, do you want to try to integrate it into the MH? Well, that's why I'm I was thinking if we it, went over each section, because yeah. it's, it's, it's really not that long. I mean, basically, we could go over it real quick. Right. Um, you want to start with the, the generic one? Yes. And then, um, then we could, whatever we suggest, we should, I would like to have it passed to Dick, so Dick could review it. Okay. And then between now and our next meeting next week, okay? So that we can sort it out by next week? Okay. Yeah. Rather than try to adopt it tonight? Well, you have, it's a Board of Health regulation. We have to give the notice in the newspaper and the hearing and all of that. So but I don't know put, if we, we could, still, we I don't think we'd have the time to do it. I think, isn't it? Well, maybe then we could do it yeah. the following. Yeah. It's yeah. just, just I don't want to make sure. put it in, but we still can discuss it and have to. I, I just want to make sure that we're moving on it fast enough that we get, get it in effect yeah. before anything happens. I just wanted uh, just something that's in this generic, this template. Um, it says that the um, it's interesting. They would call the Cannabis Control Commission CNB. I hadn't heard that before, as opposed to CCC. In this in this generic, at any rate, um, it does not currently regulate medical marijuana. The Department of Public Health regulates it until December thirty first, two thousand eighteen. Is that definite? Because I thought it well, they they were thinking of pushing it out for a bit longer, but the last I heard, it's still December thirty first. Okay. But I mean, it changes all the time. I mean, it can change between still a few months before December thirty first. Mm -hmm. Right. So they might not be ready. So do we want to read this out loud, or do you, what do you want me to do? Well, we can, if you, why don't we just take one at a time. Do you want to start with the uh, operating permit, or is that? Yeah, that's... no, we could start right there. Okay. Where are you? On page four. So you the might first is just kind of a, a uh, the first few pages is, is really a is glossary of terms and definitions. definitions. Well, you might want to start with C, yeah, marijuana sales to persons under the minimum, minimum legal age, age pr prohibited. So I'll just read this. Uh, number one, no person shall sell marijuana or permit marijuana as defined herein to be sold to a person under the minimum legal sales age or given adult use marijuana products as defined herein to a person under the minimum legal sales age. The minimum legal sales age in Deerfield is? 18. 18. 
Do we? Why wouldn't it be 21? Well, don't, didn't we do 21 for cigarettes? Yes, so why we don't did. We do 21 for marijuana. Yeah. It's 21. Okay. I knew we were planning to keep it the same as cigarettes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Number two, each person selling or distributing marijuana products as defined herein shall verify the age of the purchaser by means of a valid government issued photographic identification containing the bearer's date of birth and showing that the purchaser is 21 years of age or older. Um, there was some discussion of that um, reader machine. Do we want to require that? You know, the Not yet, because I don't know the expense of it. Well, I don't, I don't think it's, I think it's expensive, but it's like a couple thousand dollars expensive. I don't think it's like thousands and thousands. Maybe we should look into it. Do we, do we require it for alcohol or, I mean, or for No, we don't require cigarettes. it for alcohol. Although some um, companies are voluntarily buying it. I think it's a hardship for small businesses that, you know. But on the other hand, maybe too, it could be a best practice. It would fall into the same situation if they were caught selling, then they would lose their license. So I think they would be pretty careful. I mean, this is not like a tobacco license. If, if well, they were to lose okay. their license because they were they're selling out of to minors, yeah, they're, they're in trouble. So, so, um, so you want to uh, put down that we want the reader? No. Because, well, the reader supposedly proves that they did call. Can I look into that a little further? Yeah. Okay. So we'll just put a question mark. So you're, you're saying is that the reader is just proof for the retailer? that, in fact, they did it. Right, so they couldn't claim that they weren't doing it. I mean, they were doing it. It's proof yeah. that they were doing it. So no, there would be no question. Okay. You'd be a record. I'll look into that. All retail sales, number three, all retail sales of marijuana products shall be face-to-face -face between the seller and the buyer and occur at the permitted location unless until delivery of adult use marijuana is authorized and licensed under state regulations and then in strict compliance with all applicable rules and regulations as well as the age limitation set forth herein. Okay. Makes sense? Yep. So uh, section D is marijuana operating permit. Number one, no person shall sell, cultivate, deliver, or otherwise commercially distribute adult use marijuana products as defined herein within uh, the Deerfield, within Deerfield without first obtaining a marijuana operating license issued, a permit, uh, excuse me, marijuana operating permit issued annually by the Deerfield Board of Health. Only, uh, only owners of establishments with a permanent non-mobile location in Deerfield are eligible to apply for an operating permit at the specific location in Deerfield and must meet the following application requirements. A, all applicants shall certify that they are in compliance with all local and state laws, regulations, ordinances, bylaws, including proof of a current license with the CNB. CNB, is that what you were talking about? I think we should say CCC. CC. Um, and, be, uh, and be prepared to show proof of it, re proof of it requested. Uh, on the other one, are we? Is this license going to be an annual thing? Mm -hmm. Permit, liquor. Right? Yeah, just like liquor license. Because if we have any problems, what yeah. you can do is you have a review. They haven't paid their taxes. Or, or if whatever. they haven't paid their taxes, whatever. I mean, it's well, the same idea. There goes the permit right there. <laughs> there goes the permit right there. Yeah. So um, we're good to move forward. Sure. Uh, B. A marijuana. Delivery only establishment, if authorized and licensed under state regulations, shall not be required to have a permanent non mobile location, but shall have an in state permanent ad, uh, business office address and contact information available. Upon request, the establishment must share information about the current location and destination of its employees with the Deer, Deerfield Board of Health. So that's that's down the road, right? Yeah. Has, has the state been talking about delivery? They have. Mm -hmm. They well, have. That, but that can complicate a lot of things because yes. now if you have people in Greenfield or Amherst delivering to Deerfield, how do you? Yeah. I know. Oh, That's why it hasn't been um, sorted out yet. 
It's just like social consumption establishments haven't been sorted out yet. So, uh, social consumption establishments and delivery have not been sorted out on the state level. But it doesn't hurt to have it in here just in case. Uh, number two, uh, no person shall gift marijuana or marijuana products to a, a, cons a consumer contingent upon the sale of any other products. Bartering, I guess. Um, number three, no person shall accept or redeem, offer to accept or redeem, or cost or hire any person to accept or redeem or offer any... <laughs> Offer to accept or redeem any coupon that provides any marijuana product. Can we clean that one up, please? I think they did. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's a you mouthful. You should have seen it before. Really? I Let me. Know. I don't. I don't even want to try that again. Just no coupons are allowed. What happened to our sound? Can you turn us back up, please? It comes and goes. I guess so. Um, do Do we have an issue with that at all? No person shall. It, it works. All right. Except I'm not offer a lawyer. to accept or cause or hire any person to accept or redeem. Or offer to accept or redeem. Yeah. It seems redundant, but. No, no discounts. Yeah. No matter no, how you look no at it. No discount. No coupons. Okay. No coupons. <laughs> no buy one, get one free. Nope. Okay, number four. As part of the marijuana operating permit application process, the applicant will be provided with the Deerfield regulation. Each applicant is required to sign a statement declaring that the applicant has read this regulation and that the applicant is responsible for instructing all employees who will be responsible for marijuana sales about federal, state, and local laws regarding the sale of marijuana, including this regulation. Number five. Uh, well, that's kind of a tricky one. How, do, how does somebody comply with federal law if it's illegal? Well, I may have to... In federal, the event. federal taxes, money out, I don't know, federal laws. Right. Uh, a separate marijuana operating permit displayed conspicuously is required for each adult use marijuana establishment, the fee for which shall be de determined by the Deerfield Board of Health. A marijuana operating permit is non-transferable. A new owner of a marijuana establishment must apply for a new permit. Number seven, the issuance of a marijuana operating permit shall be uh, conditioned on the applicant's consent to periodic inspections of the marijuana establishment, including any business conducted off-site to ensure compliance with this regulation. Number eight, a marijuana operating permit will not be renewed if the permit holder has failed to pay all fines issued and the time to appeal the fines has expired without an appeal having been filed and or the permit holder has not satisfied any outstanding permit suspensions. If a violation was enforced by non-criminal dispositions, any appeal shall be taken pursuant to General Laws Chapter 40, Section 21D. We've got to check that out because I'm not really sure if that is what we want it to. But. Okay. I, just so I, I understand, so the Board of Health is going to issue a permit for the establishment, how does that play into the difference with the role this board plays as selectmen with a community host agreement and the role that the planning board plays with the special permitting, which? The, the planning board is just a site review, okay? It's, it's your regular site review. You're not right. doing anything. The planning board is in its lane, just do you have proper drainage, do you have proper um, signage. signage, lighting, that's it. Hours of business. We do the host agreement, which covers our costs. But no, the, the planning board issues the special permit to allow it to happen. Besides by citing it. No, it's Please. just a site plan. We do. No, that's no. It would be. It would be. No, they would. I think they would do it the. Is a permit. It is a permit. Yeah, it's. A, it's but a, then you'd well, have a board of health. It's permit. related to the siting. The host agreement is the well, our agreement and, with a company. Right. The select board does that, and then the Board of Health is the actual operation of, uh, you know, it's from a safety point of view. Yeah, right, it, from a safety point. Well, that, that's why I was just, it keeps talking about the, the permit, so yeah. I, I'm, I'm unclear as port. to, so they would get the Board of Health permit. Board, board of Health like you permit. you have a food establishment. Right, so okay. and that's why my question system. earlier was, you know, good for a year, because there was no, there's no language in the uh, permitting 
of the planning board because that that's kind of goes on. Right. Well, that's and permanent. Right. right. So you have be a, a permanent. site yeah, plan right. review. That's it. And right. once they get yeah, once they okay. get approval, and then but, the, but they have to still go through a host agreement. With oh, I understand. And then, then we we'll have a board of, board of and health and thing and to board operate of on top right. of it. Okay. Gotcha. It just happens we're the board of health as well. Yes, I understand. Okay. Number nine, a marijuana operating permit may be subjected to non-renewal if the establishment has sold a marijuana product to a person under the minimum legal sales age two times within the previous permit year and the time to appeal the, has expired without an appeal have being f have, having been filed. The permit holder may request a hearing pursuant to this regulation prior to non-renewal. Hearings will be held pursuant to section L of this regulation. So we'll get to section L. Number 10, no person under the minimum legal age, legal sales age shall be permitted to enter an establishment with a marijuana operating permit except if the establishment is co-located with a medical marijuana treatment center as defined in 935 um, CMR 500.002. Those individuals in possession of this registration card demonstrating that the individual is a registered qualifying patient with the medical use of marijuana program and is in compliance with 105 CMR 725.000 implementation of the act of act for humanitarian medical use of marijuana. Section 11, um, a retail marijuana establishment shall sell primarily marijuana, marijuana products, and marijuana accessories. The sale of other products must be merely incidental. A retail marijuana establishment is prohibited from applying for or otherwise holding a tobacco sales permit. A retail marijuana establishment is also prohibited from holding a liquor license or selling or distributing any alcohol beverage in any form. Um, section 12 is all marijuana operating permits expire on. We, we would need to choose a date then. I, I think we should choose January 1st. As just we like, do for all the others. Yeah, right. and what we well, do. December 30th. Well, yeah, December 31st. 31st, yeah. Um, and so they'd be renewed on the 1st of January, yep. just like our liquor licenses. So Section E, incorporation of 105 CMR 500.000 and 105 CMR 590.000. The manufacturer of all edible marijuana products and food and beverage products containing marijuana shall be conducted in a state licensed marijuana manufacturing facility and in accordance with all applicable state regulations, marijuana establishments and agents uh, shall be subject to 105 CMR 500.000 quotes good manufacturing practices for food and 105 CMR 590.000 uh, parentheses minimum sanitation standards for food establishments relative to edible marijuana products. I think this is where we want to add um, surf safe uh, training is required for employees. Okay. And um, best practice, this, I think that's where we want to put in best, best practices as well. Or under, maybe we should go back and put um, under 10, under 10 where we talk about no person under the minimum sales age, we could, we could put best practices training under there, you know, like a, like a tips for marijuana. So that, that way, under which? Uh, this 10. is under 10, no person under the minimal sales age. So what? Yeah, but that, mm, so, be, I think that one's just to enter the building. Right, know? but then, but you would want to put under there that we would recommend employees take um, oh, best for, practices for, for tips, or, tips to, like training. Tips okay. like training <laughs> so that they, they would recognize underage people and inappropriate people. And then, um, and then the food safe is under And then under, under e. the food safe E, safe then we should say that um, employees should be 
there should be a uh, doesn't not every employee has to have it, but there should always Anyone be a, a serve safe employee on on, on duty site. or something on site. Because serve safe means, you know, it's best practices for safe food handling. Yep. And that way it backs up the um, requirement to have, um, you know, best pack, minimum standard sanitation. Doesn't we only refer to uh, manufacturing facilities? I could be wrong, but. It, it does. And you would still need can, somebody, we can right? Smith it yeah. later. Yeah. Gotcha. So Section F, incorporation of 935 CMR 500 marijuana establishments and agents shall comply with 935 CMR 500.000. I would need a definition of that. Is that. Yeah, we'll have to look that up. I don't know what that is offhand. Okay, we'll do that. Um, out of package sales. This is Section G. The sale of or distribution of edible marijuana products in any form other than an original factory wrap package is prohibited, including the repackaging or dispensing of any edible marijuana product for retail sale. I'm going to assume that all retail sale products have to be wrapped? Yeah, and tested and I would assume labeled. Well, yeah, because you have to, the potency and... And whether it's clean. Clean and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So. Section F, self-service displays. Uh, all self-service displays of marijuana products are prohibited. Same with I, vending machines. All vending machines containing marijuana products are prohibited. J, marijuana accessories. All marijuana accessories as defined herein shall only be sold in marijuana establishments and adult-only tobacco stores. I'll just say I looked up 935 CMR and 500. It looks like it's the entire regulations, uh -huh. CCC regulations. Okay. That's easy. Um, okay. Thank you, Wendy. K, compliance with all laws. One, all cultivation, processing, manufacturing, delivery, sale, and use of marijuana shall be conducted in compliance with all laws and ordinances, regulations, or policies applicable to similar, similar activities. These shall include where act, applicable but not limited to compliance with food service permit requirements, secondhand smoke regulations, electronic cigarette regulations, nuisance laws, and all requirements associated with zoning and other local permitting. Number two, in no instance shall, shall a marijuana operating permit be issued to any establishment within 500 feet of a public or private school where children attend classes in preschool programs, kindergarten programs, or grades 1 to 12 inclusive. The 500 feet distance shall be measured in a straight line from the nearest point of the facility in question to the nearest point of the proposed marijuana establishment. The cultivation of uh, section 3, the cultivation, processing, manufacturing, delivery, sale, and end use of shall not exempt any person or entity from complying with all state and local laws, ordinances, bylaws, regulations, and policies. Violation of any other such law, not including federal laws re relating to marijuana, shall constitute a violation of this regulation and be subject to the fines and penalties described herein. Uh, nothing in this regulation give any immunity under federal law or proposes and an obstacle to federal enforcement of federal law. Number four, a marijuana establishment shall submit a security plan for review to the Deerfield Board of Health de detailing all security measures taken to ensure patient, consumer, and community safety and eliminate unauthorized access to the premises. Number five, unless specified by any other state or local requirement or agreement as to the hours of operation of a marijuana establishment, the Deerfield Board of Health, in consultation with the Deerfield Police Department and other Deerfield officials and departments, set limitations on hours of operation of any marijuana establishment. Shouldn't uh, the police department be mentioned in number four? I mean, 
Well, um, yes, they would they would have to approve the plan in part of the, our host agreement. They would have to have the plan submitted and approved as part of the host. But agreement. when it says they, the establishment submit a security plan for review by the Board of Health, I feel that the police yeah. department is better since it's equipped. in the second one, too. Well, yeah. the reason why is because there could be something different from a Board of Health point of view. Oh, I, I'm not saying to eliminate us. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, this is police. Board of so, Health and. Yeah, I think. What do you? Well, no, because the security plan to get to this point, the security plan has to be already approved I in understand. the host agreement. Okay. So this is all you're saying is that the Board of Health, which is our board, you know, our director or um, inspector, would be able to review it as well. This gives him the right of okay. review. All right. That's all. Six, the, uh, the Deerfield Board of Health may require the distribution of additional education materials in marijuana establishments. Um, this is... Uh, well. One thing that I, I don't see reading ahead is um, in Deerfield, we, we have a policy that you can't smoke in public places. Should Because of the, the, the smoke from marijuana having a, a better effect or a greater effect on surrounding people, should we talk and discuss about you know what is defined as a public place and, and should we limit that? My understanding from the CCC was that if you can't smoke in a public place, you can't smoke marijuana in a public place. Isn't that right, Wendy? But is sitting on the park bench on the common a public place? I would say yes. 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 So you can't sit there and smoke? No. Okay. You're not allowed to smoke there now, so you can't okay. smoke them. I think the, if we, if we try to define where to, I mean, it's just assumed you can't smoke in public now. And if we tried to redefine it, that we would miss something or we would limit it. Okay. It's just, it's not allowed. That's just the bottom line. So any sidewalk, should any we in, Should we consider, <clears throat> I mean, it happens frequently. I mean, every single day you see people smoking in the center of town. Um, and I know that there is penalties for that, but they're not enforced. You know, I, I don't really know all the scientific facts behind it, but, you know, if you happen to be standing or sitting next to somebody who's smoking a cigarette, you might not like it in the sense, it, you know, it goes away. But if it was for a long period of time, the smoke from the marijuana might have more of an effect on you within the, the next five minutes than cigarette, tobacco smoke. Or not. I just don't know if, um, if it's something we should even think about or... Well, I think we have to be on our game and enforce it. I mean, if there are people smoking and... Can I ask another point of clarification? Are you saying people can't smoke on the sidewalk? Cigarettes? They're not supposed, they're not supposed they're to. It's a, supposed public, to. it's a public place. Yeah, any public place. She's looking out there for Well, <laughs> I'm, you know... Yeah. On a personal level, I'd just soon fly off the planet. But yeah. on the other hand, I don't know how you enforce that. Um, well, we public so could write you a citation. For, uh, yeah. So if you're watching your ball game, right, Johnny's hitting out there, and somebody's right next to you puffing on, away. On, on the town property. I'm not so sure. So you know, I would turn to the attorneys here, but, uh, you know, when it's town property. We have a couple of attorneys. Which is different. I do well, sidewalk's town that. property, right? <laughs> Sidewalk is town property. Um, not specifically in Deerfield, but um, there are rules, local rules for um, not smoking in public places. I imagine there'd be fines associated with that, including sidewalk. Okay. Well, that would just be enforced on a case by case basis at the local level. Yeah, I, I think that's, we, we have that policy in place, but I don't know that um, it's, it's really Probably enforced. Well, how do people, I mean, there are restaurants that purposely seat people in front of their restaurant when they have open dining. How does that work? I'm not supposed to smoke. They can't do that. But it's all over. Okay. You're not allowed. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, I'm really not certain about that. Yeah. Right, well, we can look asking. into it. Okay. But I'm sorry. as far we as you know. Look you no, I think, yeah, right. <laughs> we don't have, we don't allow smoking in public places in the town of Deerfield, so. But we could dig into that little further before this is codified. Yeah. Um, so, Section L, Enforcement and Penalties. One, author, uh, author, uh, authority to inspect marijuana establishments for compliance and to enforce this regulation shall be held by the 
Deerfield Board of Health and its designees and Deerfield Police Department. Two, any person may register a complaint pursuant to this regulation to initiate an investigation and enforcement with the Deerfield Board of Health and its designees. Compliance inspection shall be conducted at a minimum of three times annually. If permissible by local bylaws ordinances, any, um, any fines or fees collected pursuant to this regulation shall be used for the administration and enforcement of this regulation and for and or for activity any activities incidental to this regulation for it, the operation of marijuana establishments and the sale and use of marijuana. For it shall be the responsibility of the marijuana operating permit holder and or business agent to ensure compliance with all applicable sections of this regulation. Any marijuana establishment found to be in a violation of the provisions of this regulation may receive a written warning, citation, a fine, a marijuana operating permit suspension, or a marijuana operating permit revocation. Number five, any permit holder or any person or entity charged with violation of any provision of this regulation shall receive a notice of violation from the Deerfield Board of Health or its designate, designated agent unless an appeal of such violation notice is waived by the permit holder or any permit or any person or entity charged. The Board of Health shall conduct a hearing to determine the facts of the violation, the appropriate corrective actions, the terms of suspension, if any, and and or issue a permit revocation order. Number six, prior to issuing any suspension or revocation, the Deerfield Board of Health shall provide notice to the permit holder of the intent to suspend or revoke a permit, which notice shall contain the reasons therefore, and establish a time and date for a hearing, which the date shall be no later than seven days past, seven days after the date of said notice, the permit holder shall have an opportunity to be heard at such hearing and shall be notified of the Board of Health's decision and the reasons therefore in writing. After a hearing, the Deerfield Board of Health shall, may suspend or revoke the permit if the Board of Health finds that a violation of this regulation occurred. Section seven, alternatively violations of this regulation may be enforced by non-criminal method of disposition as provided in general laws chapter 40 section 21 d and as enabled pursuant to the deerfield's enabling bylaw a each day a violation exists shall be deemed to be a separate offense m variances one, a variance from this regulation may be requested in writing by the, by the Deerfield Board of Health. A variance may be granted by the Deerfield Board of Health after a hearing, at which time the applicant establishes the following. A, strict enforcement of this regulation would do manifest injustice, and B, the granting of a variance shall not in any way impair the public health and safety or the environment. Two, the Board of Health may impose any conditions, safeguards, and other limitations on a variance when it deems it appropriate to protect the public health and safety or the environment. Um, what would, when would we give it? It seems to me it should be to the Board of Health. In that yeah. yeah. Well, I'm also thinking, um, when would we ever give a variance to this? Mm. I think... You always have to put in a you variance, have to put one in. but you don't. I mean, I can't envision ever giving a variance either. Right. Um, well, I don't know what the what the threshold is for I manifest know. injustice. I know. Um, I don't know. Thank you, lawyers. Since we're talking about <laughs> these regulations, should we include something? I mean, at the planning board, there was a lot of discussion. Um, about the odor 
from this growing, uh, especially if it was outside. This uh, is, um, I, uh, let me just get you. While you're looking, can I finish my last sentence? Yeah. And then the we're done. Sentence. No, I got a couple more. And severability. If any provision of this regulations is declared invalid or unenforceable, all other provisions shall not be affected thereby, but shall be in full force and effect. O, oh, effective date. This regulation shall take effect immediately upon passage by the Board of Health. And then we sign the date. This is, um, we talked about um, require it to be a public nuisance. We, we talked about nuisance early on, so we could um, talk about requiring, making sure there's no noxious odors. Um, requires that special lightings for the purpose of growing plants be only visible, you know, on the property. But should we have someone draft, or, or you, Dick, can talk about this. If, if there's an operation somewhere in the community and the neighbors claim that they're getting ill from it or whatever, how, how, do, we, how do we handle it? Shouldn't we it think should about be, that? Yeah. Um, that would... I'm, un I'm thinking it would be under that incorporation of 105 CMR 500, right, Wendy? Is that when they talk about the odors? Is that's that the whole. That's the whole thing. That's the whole. The whole caboodle. Yeah. The regulations. All, All right. Regulations. You know what? Um, let Dick and I figure out yeah. where to insert it. Something like that. Any way okay. we can group like spreading manure on the field in that too? <laughs> that one's the right to farm community, right? Just you know checking. It's not going to be in the field. One smells worse than the other. We've we got to be just concerned with odors. Well, okay. and, right. and, and here again, I don't know. But part of the thing, part of the issue that I have is that, you know, the manure is unpleasant as it might be, unless it, it has no effect on it. I know some people really oh. like it. So. Well, I know. <laughs> but I, I'm saying if it's if it's a crossing, but if if there's acres of the marijuana growing. And you know, people start becoming dizzy from this. Um, that's a different situation. Can you be now. dizzy from the smell of a well, like, burn? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's what they say. That's and not the point. Quite Why would strong, you buy you know? it? You would just stand out by the fence. I know. I just. <laughs> I I was unclear as to what, how how much it really uh, well, smelled. Well, and I think well, it was we attorney get Evans should go to Arizona and, and said, you know, see what it's like. Uh, we we'll take a field trip. Anyways. Yeah. But we can look into that because I, I do we'll, want to protect the public. Obviously, if there's we'll put it incorporate it somewhere. I right. will just have to figure out where. I, I'll I'm put taking it in, notes on all this. I can yeah. sort of write okay. it on the proposed regs, get it to council, and mm -hmm. say these these are the right. kinds of things. So we're, okay, noxious odors is what we want to call it. Protection from noxious odors that can make you ill. No, just you just say noxious odors. No, That's it can a, make you ill. Well, noxious it's got to be a public health thing, because well, if yeah, somebody could just complain that it smells. Odor, noxious odors is a public is it, health thing. Is it? Definition. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure. Um, like piggeries. Yeah. <laughs> um, a few of those. The only other thing that we didn't incorporate was that since there is no OSHA, we need to, I, I mean, I feel strongly about trying to make sure we have some oversight on employees' health. So well, let's, we need to incorporate that somewhere in here. I'll, why don't we I research never, what other facilities be, are doing? Yeah, I mean, we could do that under the inspections, you know, records available, but we have to be able to tell them what we expect. Well, the videos we that I've some. seen of processing plants and all, they're extremely well covered up, hair nets, masks, right. gloves, so we could find out what they're you know, what their regulations well, are for I, I that. I think, you know, and again, the attorneys, I think, can speak to this, but I believe there's pretty stringent regulations sure about is. that. But already. we would From just want to be able to verify it, that's all. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, that they're following you know, those. Right, yes. that we have some way to verify employee safety. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Because there is no other oversight, um, you know, from a federal level. I get it. All right, so do you want to move on to the uh, sure. community Discuss host agreements? Yeah, Discuss yeah let me we just point out something about mm -hmm. the one that uh, looks like this. Um, yeah. It was specifically, as you look at it, um, uh, 
I think it came from a town and they deleted the, the town uh, from council. And it makes reference to a formally cited um, marijuana dispensary. I have an extra copy she of that one. Draft, if you need one. They, so this, they is, this, draft. Is a dra this is just a, a generic. That's a draft. And I think council anybody. provided it to us to supplement you know, with some clauses, actually, the one we have from Lester, which is in effect. Read it. No, that's just right. Yeah, the extra copy. copy. I think Carolyn's oh, looking for it. Carolyn, are you looking for that? Here's an extra copy. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't. I Can don't. I just make a copy of it? Sure. What, what did, is that from Lester? This is from Lester. Oh, oh no, yeah, I have not, Lester. This is not from Lester. I think oh, Lester's I the one we should look at. <laughs> yes. I, let me just see. I know I have it here somewhere. Um, I have Lester's. I read it online, but I haven't. Okay. Um, has, oh no, I don't have that. Um, has there any been any feedback from Lester's host agreement? I haven't heard anything, but I don't. <coughs> feedback from Anybody. how it's working? Yeah. Um, I don't know, ask the press. They know more than anybody. <laughs> have you heard anything from any host agreement that is in, like Lester's host agreement? Have you heard anything, Josh? They applied to you? I have not sneaked out here. No. no. <laughs> um. I don't even know if it's operating yet. They were licensed. I believe they were a medicinal facility, and and they've been licensed now to go full on. <laughs> but I don't know if they're operating yet. No, nope, they're not operating yet. So there is no feedback yet. Oh. No, you know what? This is exactly the same. Which one is that? Um, I have a, I have two Lester. That's why. That's why he doesn't have one because you have two. No, oh, I have one. No, he's in there doing yeah. copy of it. I thought there was a, okay. a cultivating one. No, this is. No, Lester's just one thing, one agreement. All right, here. I'll get that down. I'm sorry. I'll check it. I'll come. He's right there. Tell him it was right there. <laughs> um, so. Trevor, we've do, got do a wanna, copy for you. Do you, you. want to just, you know, yep. pick things out and talk about them? I mean, I, I don't feel that we're really qualified to scrutinize these things, but, you know, there's some things that I've noticed <coughs> that we could talk about. I don't know. Well, what, what I'd like to do is forward to Lisa um, these host agreements that we already have. Right. And. Um, just go over Lester's that we like, you know, pick out stuff that we yep. like. So Wendy can make note of it to make sure that it's incorporated in the host agreements that we have. But one of the things that I've noticed in a couple of different ones, they talk about, uh, you know, the percentage of funds that they're going to pay to the town. Um, and it always talks about year-end uh, scenarios and calculating out their expenses. I think that it could be done uh, monthly or quarterly, like they would pay sales tax to the state, instead of waiting an entire year to get that money. Are, are you, do you know you're going to have to pay the state quarterly for taxes? Or monthly? Monthly, monthly to, the te to the state? Um, I'm not sure about that. Uh, I'm not sure about that. If they deal with it like any other retail thing, it will be monthly, and if it's a volumes large enough, it'll have to be, you know, weekly to the state. Well, they could probably report to us and do that. Well, that's what I'm just saying yeah. that you know, either monthly or quarterly instead of. Well, at the end yeah, of the year. I wouldn't want to make it a different than the state, but I, I wouldn't have a problem with making it the same. I, I know, but what, what I was I was just pointing out that I, in all of these, I saw. Um, it was the language was very similar. It was at the end of the year calculations on, and they make a payment.
Do you want to do that? Well, I, I, I made a note. I just figured, you, I think it's a good idea. What about you, Trevor? Say again. You know, and all of these documents that I read, most of the agreements talk about at the end of a, a, a calendar year, they calculate what their annual sales were and they make a payment, whether it's a 3% um, by some or however they figure it out. And I think it should be either monthly or quarterly on their sales. I, I just think we should match what the, what the state, state is requiring. I don't, I don't want to have a different burden. The state well, does it quarterly. Well, not really. You have to pay every month sales tax. And, and if, you're, if the volume is large enough, and I really don't remember what the cutoff is, but some places have to do it weekly. Well, I know that I know the state is paying it quarterly. That I what do, do you know. Mean the state is paying. The state pays us back quarterly. Is that what you're talking about? When we get our sales tax? Oh no no no! Um, oh, when I, you collect the well, sales tax. No, if you have a retail business and you collect sales tax, you have to pay that to the uh, Commonwealth every month. Mm -hmm. If it's an extremely small business, you can do it quarterly. But uh, so. I mean, we, what are you asking for again? All of these agreements say that at the end of a calendar year, the people will then, you know, through documentation, just say, all right, we had X amount of dollars of sales and the 3% that we owe the community is here, and here's your check. And all I'm saying is that we shouldn't wait until the end of the year for them to calculate. It should be done either monthly or quarterly, like, like the state would require, but mm -hmm. I don't really off the top of my head, know what the, the cutoff is, is what the dollar value that makes a difference. I, I would just say we could put in that will match the state. Okay. I, I wouldn't want an additional burden on them, but if they're reporting to the state, they yeah, will report yeah, to us. They, they know every, yeah, they're yeah. going to know all the time, sure. You know, the state does make it very easy because they can file everything online and stuff, where the town, it's not, you know, they would have to fill something out or they could just send us a check or something like that, it wouldn't be as easy. Because most businesses, well, now here again, I don't know what the banking regulations are. I mean, most retail establishments just go online and they enter in what the sales, what their gross sales were. The computer actually figures out the sales tax and it's already linked to their banking account and they just, you click on pay and the money's gone. I don't, I understand that this type of business is not going to use the, the banking system as we know it, so. To figure that out. Yep. Um. I think the thing that we should talk about is the community impact fee and the um, calculation of the impact fee. Okay. I mean, yep. my, my thing is that all costs should be accounted for. Um, you know, we're not going to sub subsidize marijuana in any way. So... Well, did I, am I mistaken that I read that the impact fee cannot be more than 3%? Correct. Can't be more than 3%. It's not supposed to be, but you're, you can calculate what, it, what is happening in your community and what costs you're incurring. Okay. I know this one, Lester has a 3% uh, right. for annual gross, gross annual revenues, and they have a minimum of 75000 and a maximum of 250 depending on what they what they've worked out. But I, I, don't think, I don't think that we should put a, 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 max, a maximum amount on there. I mean, just, I, I don't think it's going to be that large, but, you know, if they sold $100 million worth of stuff, we should still get the, the 3%. Well, when you talk I, about, you have to be able to, um, reasonable indirect costs. So you do have to calculate. Yep, um, I understand. And I, I think, I mean, to be fair, we should, we should make sure that we are calculating correctly. And that, that would be what I want to discuss. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, we can, we can discuss, you know, all the different things, whether it's, uh, you know, the, the cost of our resource officer in the school, how much training not only he does, but he does with the, the kids, what other, other outreach that we do to the community. Um, you know, whatever the police department, you know, does in time with their checking yeah. facilities or yeah. if there's incidents and, you know, the Board the of Health. health. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I guess my comment about having a maximum is if, if we find that 
you know, we're spending a lot of money and the money was available. I'd hate to put a dollar amount saying that's our cap and, you know, after the fact say, oh, you know, the 3% came out to be 500,000 and our real costs were 400,000, but we're limited to only collecting 250 because that's what we put in there, you know. Anything um, this you else want to talk about? Um, no, I, I I was speaking to Wendy earlier about um, you know having uh, Lisa. Or what was the other young woman's name? Kate Federoff. Kate. Kate to to uh, maybe consult with um, you know their uh, if they have a uh, a real estate uh, attorney that deals with leases as well as some of the other terminology in here. No. Nine is the one where you talk about monitoring community impacts. I, I, the problem is you have to set up some way to measure. Right. And which one? Are you nine, nine. Nine. Which agreement? <laughs> the Lester one. Oh, okay. I mean, they're not really. They're not saying how they're doing the monitoring, but I mean, to me that. Maybe you can get away with, they must have gotten away with this general language. Mm -hmm. That's strange. <laughs> Too many copies. For I mean, I, I, I guess I, I wouldn't have. that strange. But. Yeah, I mean, I would have wanted to define it a little bit more. But. Not getting into the ones we have right now. We're just talking about what we may want well, in the future. Well, you can look one. at them to see if it's got what you. Well, yeah. I like it I've, because it's simpler. And, and in some ways, it doesn't restrict you. I'm referring to the ones that sons have submitted to us. Mm -hmm. it doesn't uh, restrict where the money goes. Um, right. The way the Lester hamstrings that to certain things. So. They did. I, was I thought to think so. Of that. <laughs> Where um, did um, the assessors weigh in on how they're going to assess the property? Did John? I mean, we should we have John the? In yet. Should we meet with? We should meet with meet John. With well, I mean, I don't. I mean, I have no problem meeting with him, but I I believe that the assessors, uh, you know, they have multiple ways of assessing the real estate. Um, you know, one is the actual uh, cost of the facility. Uh, the other is the replacement cost of facility. And they also have the ability to assess the property uh, by the income that the uh, real estate uh, develops. So, you know, in, in the past, I've, I've questioned where there's, you know, two buildings that are of similar size, and yet the taxes are, are substantially different. Um, and, and one might be a, a facility that generates, you know, a couple million dollars worth of income, where the other one across the street only generates three hundred thousand dollars, and so that's they have another formula for that. Do we need to be as complicated as Lester? No. I mean, I, I mean this post agreement looks looks like it covers almost everything. Well, that's Did why you? I think that the the lawyer should the lawyer should really kind of look at it from two different things: is to protect the town from you know the legal aspects of you know this this host agreement and all of the money but also as more of a, a real estate type thing so we don't get caught up in language I, I in i was reading in one of these agreements where it talked about you know the town can't do this without the approval of the client and the town can't do this without the approval of the client and it really should be the client can't do this without the approval of the town you know and that's that's the important thing that you know somebody who's really up on um not only uh, agreements, but lease type things, you know, how it's worded is where we can kind of get bogged down and stuff. You know, I don't have the ability to do that. So 
I would then direct you back to the one that council did provide because right. it's got this sort of boilerplate right. inclusions and then you can detail it more. But just ignore this this paragraph because it references back to okay. Uh, I, I, DPH and dispensary. This is a simpler one too. This is sort of like matches sons kind of stuff. I mean, it looks actually it looks almost the same as the one we're getting here. Hmm. So looking. Did you give us one? Did you give us one? Did you? I don't think I've seen a one, a, a host agreement from proposed? Naturals yet, right? No. No, okay. I didn't think so. So, but you're scheduled. You're, yeah. You're scheduled for next week's meeting. But in terms of the three percent tax, that's payable. Right. The excise tax is paid to the state. Correct. And then there's a then, and then an impact fee an can annual, be three percent annually. The excise tax. Um. Mm-hmm. Are you calling the sales tax excise tax? Yeah, it's um, 64 and section 2, it says the excise tax is imposed upon the sale of marijuana at a rate of 10.75% of the total sales price received by the, by the marijuana retailer. The excise tax shall be levied in addition to the state tax imposed upon the sale of property or services is provided in section 2 of chapter 64H and shall be paid by a, a marijuana retailer to, 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 by, to the commissioner at the time provided for filing the return required by section 68. But that's independent of sales tax. That's independent of the sales tax. Right. But it says that um, Sales tax is payable. The marijuana retailer under section three shall pay the local sales tax imposed under this section of the commissioner at the same time and in the same manner as the sales tax due to the Commonwealth. Okay. Oh, well, that's good. Then, then I, I think we should, should still note it in that agreement, but even if it was as simple as that. And then it says all sums received by the commissioner shall at least quarterly be distributed for yes. pay. Right. The city or town. That's right. That's what I thought. Um, why don't we um, send these sun agreements down to Katie and uh, Lisa to review? Well, it sounds like there's there's because these these are very similar to the generic one. And, there, and there's I think there's six because there's six different types of yeah. possibilities. I could be wrong about that. Yeah, six yeah. different. Right, and we wanted Businesses. we wanted separate host Operation. agreements for each. Or right, Dick and I recommended it so that we can, and to, uh, just because they might get licensed at different times, and also we wanted to make sure the costs were accounting to each type of operation. Now we can enter into more than one host agreement. Correct. For as far as the cultivation goes, but not necessarily for the retail sales. Correct. Well, we could, but. They have to fit within our district. overlay district. There's no limitation. It's, just, it's, it's, it's the state is the one that licenses people. Right. Have, has there been any more conversation as far as, and I, and I maybe shouldn't use the, the term farm stand, but uh, there was some discussion as um, the people who actually grow this being able to sell out of that location. I don't think they've been allowed. No. No. Okay. Yeah. As far as I know, no. Like a like a. Yeah, like a farm stand or a co-op kind of thing. I think that once we get going as a state, I think there will be adjustments. But I think people, I mean, the this, this CCC is supposed to be sensitive to people's input. And that is why social consumption has been, you know, squashed for the well, time being. Also, because also for the ex no one wanted to do social consumption. I mean, there was no towns that wanted to do that. I'm kind of mixed on the 
farm stand kind of thing because I always think people have the right to farm what they want to farm. But when you have companies making huge investments in regulations and stuff, and then you just have somebody put something up by the road, it doesn't oh, really seem fair. That's, that's well, not no, really can't. what I meant. And that's why I didn't oh. want to use it, the term farm stand. What do you mean? I, what I meant is if, if there's a facility, a licensed facility, within that facility can they have a store so people can come into that store at that facility. But in Deerfield, we only have an overlay district where that retail can happen in our overlay district. But if the state says, no, these people are allowed to do it, then how does that fit in? That's no, because you have your overlay district. That, okay. That's why you have zoning. Because they're able to, you, you're saying if they're cultivating in right, one if, spot. Right, and then they, they say allowed? that that cultivator is now allowed to sell in that location. But it's not zoned for retail, right? right? It's, it's not yeah. zoned for retail. Okay. Gotcha. That's right. why you have zoning. All right. That's why you have the ability to have moratoriums so you can pick your right. be more overlay, restrictive, be right. as restrictive as possible. So if we put any thought into the percentage that we would want from cultivation versus um, retail, you know that seems to be we, different we than don't many. Have to, we don't have a choice. We can't. We can only charge on the retail end of it. We can't charge on the cultivation. Although someone but, did offer. Yes, there are some that. people offering. But uh, that's, we, I don't think we have the ability to, to impose that. We have the ability to cover our costs. And Even the, and on uh, uh, the cultivation? Yes. That's why you have several host agreements. Because right. every operation has different costs. Has different impact. They, can, they don't pay sales tax on the, on the, on the cultivation. But you um, can still right. assess a percentage of sales, like because Lester has. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, do we want to send this? I think we should. I would want someone to look at this. Of course. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, are I'll we, have Kate look at those. Yeah. Okay. So, we're going to have them sent out to council. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then get feedback. Yep. Yeah. I, I'll look at Lester's if you have um, questions. again. But. Which do you want me to send to council? The, the, the six, only agreement, six, that we have. six agreements that we have. Host agreements from Sun. Okay. So previously they were requesting for medicinal. Right. And this is You're right. There's multiple for many there's many right. options okay. here. So I'd just like to look at that. But I, and I do want to discuss with them because all they've come for is medicinal marijuana. Well, they That's all they've the, asked they for. They haven't had so the outreach. Far. Right. You're going to set up the outreach, David? When are you going to do that? Uh, you're talking about the community outreach meeting. Right. So we have that time to schedule for August. Okay. But well, we're, we're I was working on coordinating the notice now. It's just there's a lot of different requirements, both at the state and local level. So we just want to make sure that we're covering everything so that we'll be able to apply for a state license when the time comes. Okay. Um, so council well, did advise to wait for uh, the host community agreement to be in place to, to um, do the non-opposition letter that was a recommendation. Except that that is opposite under the DPH. You need that to even go forward a little. I, you were in on that. I was so, in on that, and I, I still... I wanted to get a, a bit of clarification. Uh, d did Kate understand that that was going? I know she's not available tonight. Did she understand that was going through two different avenues? Let me just read her. Okay. You have that. I think I have it somewhere. Let me read what she said. Do you have it? No. Oh, let me uh -huh. just find it. We talked to her too. This yeah. is just under the Department of Public Health thing. It's like it we can have multiple of these. You can have as many as you want. Okay. This is for anybody. This just means that they can start the process. I, I wouldn't want to commit to a host agreement yet. So the letter, the letter itself is fine. This is a letter requesting 
this um, letter of non-opposition. Um, council was saying the letter itself is fine, though you can consider adding language, reserving your rights in the negotiation of the HCA host agreement and local approvals. Uh, but those are required regardless. The letter of non-opposition is not required until the siting profile stage. You can in determining whether you should agree to the letter of non-opposition, insist on reaching terms for an, I, an HCA. Either way, the HCA is required by law and needs to be negotiated at some point. Now might be a good time, but, um, but I, I'm just wondering if she was thinking that that it wasn't required until citing profile through the CCC. And that would be one question I'd want to ask yeah, her it, versus it, it the does other. imply that, yeah. yeah. Instead no, of, and they're going through the deep, Department DPH, of Public Health. Well, I don't know now. When they came to us, they were only proposing medicinal, well, so right. I don't know. Can you give clarification on what, what you're actually applying for and what avenue you're yeah, applying? Yeah, you could come up yeah, to, come the to the mic. Yeah, come to the mic. it's being recorded and, and broadcast live. What, what's the intentions of the company and sure. kind of what avenue you're going on? So we'll, we're going to be applying you for You want to introduce yourself? Oh, my name is David Ely, and I'm an attorney at Vicente Cedarburg. We're here on behalf of Sons Mass, Inc., and we're going to be applying, as I mentioned in the letter of intent, we're going to be applying for six different um, operations, cultivation, product manufacturing, and retail sales for both medical and adult use. We're asking for the letter of non-opposition because that is, what, that is what is required by the Department of Public Health for the phase three siting profile. And then we'll also, we're also looking for the host agreement, which is what we will need uh, to apply for an adult use license. But we're, I mean, I have no problem with the letter of non-opposition at this time, but um, I don't feel comfortable committing to the host agreement at this time. So I'm, I don't have a problem if we want to do that tonight under the medical marijuana dispensary process to DPH. And so just to clarify, you're going through DPH for this process, not CCC? So, so for medical, it's under the Department of Public Health. Which? For which you need the letter for. Correct. The letter of non-opposition is part of the, the medical marijuana application from the Department of Public Health. Right. The okay. host community agreement is required for both medical and Correct. adult use, yep. but you won't be able to submit a complete adult use application without the host agreement. Right. So if we got the letter of non-opposition for medical now, it would enable us to submit the phase three setting profile and get a provisional license to keep the process moving. Obviously, we'll need to enter into a host agreement at some point. You know, nothing can proceed without that. Right. But um, if you know, if the board is willing, you know, we appreciate being able to proceed with our medical application in the meantime. But certainly, you know, it's up to the board how the timing of it and how they want to proceed. You can only have one retail here. Correct. In our overlay district, right. that's correct. That's right. That's, that's, that's right. why I'm not yeah. willing and to. And I didn't want to do a. You give both applicants the letter of non opposition. You're only going to give one applicant the host community. Correct. Right. It doesn't make any sense to, to do that at this point. I think you'd have to try to negotiate on a host community agreement and decide which applicant you want to choose. Well, that's kind of where I was leaning originally. When, I'm, I'm, when I stopped it. I, I wanted to do the, I don't mind doing the letters of non-opposition, but I'm not ready, ready to commit to a host agreement yet. That's my problem. Were, were, was the other applicant planning to uh, request a, a letter of non-opposition, or did we you, assume, you didn't we assume, need? We assume that we would request a letter of non-opposition, give a proposed host community agreement, and try to work that out. They would come, they would be simultaneous. Okay. Because you can't have if one establishment gets a medical marijuana a right to sell a medical marijuana treatment center. Yep. Or, or an MDA, then that forecloses the recreational. Correct. The other applicant. Right. So it makes it would make sense to me that you would eventually choose one applicant to the other, and they'd be able to proceed on both fronts. That was where or, I was leaning or, originally. Or, or we can look at it this way, that if we, we could give out the notice, I, I mean, a letter of non-opposition, um, and, I would and like then to. be 
kind of generic to the fact, but what, what, have, what I would say is we take out the addresses for any retail or medical marijuana, only do it for the cultivation sites if that's what's needed. But if you give a light, if you give a light, if you give a light, a, a non-opposition letter, and somebody gets approval, which they don't need a host community agreement for, for the medical, you don't need a host community agreement for the medical. You only need it for the recreation. Right. And they operate, and, just and they get in. it's sort of a race. To the, I thought to you the had to have a host agreement, no matter what you did. No, you have to the recreation. No, I thought you had to have a host agreement for medical as well. Was that optional? Are you saying host agreements just for medical were are optional I, up to the community? I, I think it's just it's for the recreational Because we had one for medicinal no, previously. Yes, I think. But you I have don't to know what host. guided us on that. Oh, you, the the letter of non-opposition is just a start, and then you have to have the host agreement. I'm not I'm not ready to commit to a host agreement at this point. Well, well, you can have a letter of non-opposition contingent upon working out a host committee agreement, I guess. Yeah, I mean. But you should, you should, you should. Condition I'm not it. opposed to who, to both groups at this point, but I, I'm not ready to commit to a host agreement yet. Good question. Um, if I may, I just wanted to um, just clarify that host agreements are required for both medical and adult use. Yes. They're not a part of the application at this point for medical. Um, they are part of the application for adult use, but state, under state law, they are both required. Right. I, uh, I'm, I I'm sorry, if I may also... Um, I, think, I think we should wait. I, I think we should go ahead. Offer both. All this is saying is you're not opposed to it. But we're not... We're not committing to a host agreement. I guess I'm just not, I don't know that. If, if, if our lawyer was here saying that, yeah, it, it doesn't matter and it's not going to be a stumbling block, I would just hate to give it, give it out and then find out that it kind of tied our hands, you know. And I don't know if it really holds the applicants up that much, you know. It does because you can't move forward in the DPH process. But if they can't go forward without this, they can't go forward without the host agreement either. So neither application is going to go forward unless the, the recreational host agreement. Mm -hmm. I don't want to commit. They're not going to go forward with. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't either. You, you want one. that at the town, sir? Yeah. Right. The medical, I, I mean, of course, that I, doesn't that doesn't generate tax. It doesn't generate any money. And if I may, um, we have tried to submit uh, letters of non-opposition in the past that have been conditioned on signing a host community agreement, and the DPH has rejected them. So just just to let you know, we've, we've gone down that road before, and uh, they always get kicked back. So, so what? Can, well, I, can I ask a question? Yeah, please. What impact does a letter of non-opposition? What What is its meaning? What is its significance? Sure. It's, it's basically uh, documentation that the property is zoned correctly for the use and that the town does not oppose the use. And it is just a simple documentation requirement that lets the Department of Public Health know that the town is, is on board and the property is zoned correctly for the proposed use. And then what's the next step? So once you have your siting profile submitted and approved, you'll get a provisional license, which is called a provisional. We're talking about medical right now. You get a provisional certificate of registration. And at that point, you can proceed with the architectural review phase, your special permitting phase, and it'll just sort of allows you to continue the process. But then once that goes in, you don't have any chance that's in right. this town to change it. That's right. And that's why I think we should wait, you know, Carol. And in, in, in that way, we can, we can get our own the host, agreement. host agreement together that w the what we like and we can present it to both applicants and then they can bring their case forward to us and you know if it holds one up a couple of weeks over the other I don't know. I think it's better, better, more beneficial to us to to make the to get the best choice and not tie our hands in any way and I, and I'm I'm not really an expert at it so you know. Well, as long as we keep moving on it. Oh, yeah, no, I get you. I, I know. I mean, I feel like we're on the well, timeline. Well, speaking yep. to that, I, 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 I,
uh, updated our special permit application package. Um, happy to give one to you. It needs approval by the planning board before it's legitimate, but I, uh, Attorney Lesser's asked for, I gave him a draft version. It is. Uh, it will be on the planning board agenda for approval. Okay. Yeah. So unfortunately, you know, we don't have our bylaw codified yet, so we're kind of attaching it, and it's it's tricky to read through to understand it all. But um, I'm sure the attorneys can figure that out. So. Well, so we could we could submit all of this to Lisa's office yes. and ask them to to make us one, and then we could distribute that, and then you know, we can right. have the applicants come in. And Go from there. So are you so are you recommending that we take son's host agreements to Lisa now for review? Yeah, I okay. send them all to them. Okay. You know, if they if and they have the Lester one or and well obviously they gave us a generic one and send these all in and okay. let let I, them uh, review them and, and all make right. them up. I I just want to make sure that it's matched more to the generic one. Well, I don't think... Then a, that, huge, then a huge book. Yeah, yeah I've sent them the well, Lester one as well. And then well, you had one, right? Well, that, that's it. And, you, and, you, were, you were speaking to what you would offer, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, but if you're going to pair one, then I would submit a proposal and I'd wait for your preparation. Right. If you're not prepared... Well, the, ter the, the, the monetary terms, I think, is what, you know, um, I don't know if... That's the final got the negotiation. Minutes. Yeah. 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 The final well, negotiation. I, I be believe that there were some differences in what you were proposing, um, as far as how you calculated the the payments to the town. Some differences between. Well, instead of having, I, if I my memory serves me right, instead of a, a, a three percent on the retail sales, there was a, 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 a lower two percent on the retail sales and a one percent on all the wholesale sales. And there was a cap on the wholesale up to right. fifty thousand only. Yeah. Is that supposed to subject to negotiation? Of course. Exactly. Of right. course. Yeah. Bargaining position. Yep. You know, if, 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 you know, if the town has to figure out its sort of reasonable cost. Sure. And if it's three percent and it figures out, then that's what it will be. Right. right. We're just making I, an offer on the cultivation in, in, in addition to which we're not required to do. Correct. All right, and, and would have costs associated with that. And and I don't know what this industry is going to be. You know, I've heard a lot of wild speculation. And, and it, if it is everything that some people claim, that's great. But on the other hand, if I'm looking at a more conservative approach, and I feel that, uh, or at least I like the idea of getting a little bit of, you know, a lot of different areas of this yeah. business instead of just putting all my eggs in one basket as to where that fund would come from. I so think it's, it's, we think it's basically it's overestimated. It's a what? Uh, it's overestimated. What the funds will generate for the town. Right. Yeah. Right. So, you know, the, the, if you do the calculations, it's really not that much money. So we just make sure we got to cover our costs. And we cover our costs of education and outreach. Right. But, but that, sure. And you could do that through a minimum, too. Right. How does that, well, let me ask this, how does that work if, if the town comes up, let's just say at the minimum is $100,000, but yet the actual sales only justify of the 3% come out to be 20000 They still have paid the 100000 That's how Lester's is set up. That's how Lester's is set up, yeah. Well, that's, that's where it's but that's why you document your expenses, because right. we're saying up front, we're not subsidizing. We're not, right. you're and, coming to town, you're paying your costs. Or, 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 or otherwise I, I'm just, I just want, I don't, but here again, because I don't know this industry, I don't want, if our fixed costs are whatever they are, 50000 100000 then have the uh, applicant or whatever come back and say our sales were much lower and the state says that we only have to pay the 3%. And then you get into an argument, well, the contract says this, and, you know, that's right. I know, but a police officer is... You know, fifty thousand dollars plus benefits. So you're talking, you know, seventy-ish. Oh, I, I understand. I mean, and that's just a police officer. Sure. If your your health inspector is going from twenty hours to forty hours, that's you. Sure. You know, oh, I, you well, know, I'll, this is twenty another twenty thousand dollars. I like the idea of the funds coming being spread out more. Oh. The, the chances are that the cultivation end of it is going to generate more money than the retail. But 
I don't know that. You think he will? Retail will? Yeah. You think? But in Deerfield, you know, I, I mean, if you have a facility that's growing, I don't even know how we package this stuff, but if it's growing a thousand pounds a year, uh, you're not going to sell it all in Deerfield. So, you know, all that's going to be sold somewhere else. You know, if you take Boston for an area, you know, a large metropolitan area, they're not going to have open fields to grow it, so they're going to be importing it from Deerfield to Boston. Um, and that's, that's what I was thinking more. Maybe. Maybe. How much oh, yeah. of it is looking like indoor growing versus outdoor growing? 80, About 90 percent. Across the state. Well, Probably 95 or 100 percent. Indoor growing and people are just beginning to look at greenhouses because the electricity cost is 30 to 40 percent of your operational budget. Yep. That's a huge amount. People are going, wow. Mm -hmm. We didn't expect it to be that high. We're surprised, you know. So people are really looking at looking at, at greenhouses or enclosed greenhouses or using the sun and trying to cut down on that cost. Yeah. So most of what I know lately actually the bylaw talks about people who are doing cultivation, they're they're encouraging almost requiring solar. Yeah. In part. To get it off the grid as much as possible. It looks like there's a lot of proposals in Holyoke and using old mill buildings. So well, I imagine... The reason is because the Holyoke has a municipal oh, electrical electric, system right. which has a lower cost, so Very people low. are going to Holyoke in a part because of the mill buildings, but also, which are very cheap, but also in large part because the electrical costs yeah. are lower. You know, if people are hooked up to gas, obviously that's a huge, a huge plus because there's a gas moratorium present. You can generate the heat through the gas if you can get the gas. But the moratorium doesn't show any signs of ending I mean, in this area in the near Holyoke future. Ga Holyoke Gas and Electric actually is a gas and electric company. It's not just the name, they actually do. Yeah, yeah. So that's why people are going all over. So why don't we take all this information and send it off to the lawyers? And yeah, I just want to review with. Uh, one or individually with each of you, I ha captured the, the particulars that you wanted, mm -hmm. so I can add that in to an, at least to an email and say these are these are what you want. So. Okay. All right. Um, Is there anything else you want to talk about? Well, well um, I had a couple things, but sure. go ahead. We had we had the REPC meeting today, and um, you know we talked about the planning meeting for August 2nd for our tabletop November 3rd for the flooding of the Deerfield River. Okay. And um, Great River Hydro canceled their Thursday um, EAP rollout, emergency action plan rollout here um, because it's not ready still. So just, just I mean, it's um, 19 months since they have the license and they still have no EAP, which is required by law which is required by FERC. So okay. um, so they're, they're planning it at the end of August. Oh, the crazy. idea is that if they don't have it by our tabletop, I don't, I don't know what we're going to do, but whatever. Yeah. I guess yeah. it would be pretty obvious yeah. that they're not going to get relicensed then. Right. <laughs> they, they, yeah. Their relicensing is in April of 2019, which is coming pretty fast. So I just didn't... Um, I just wanted to discuss Frontier's um, E and D. We, I was, they're going to hopefully take that and do their security on their doors. They were working with Chief Cherik on that, and I think um, like we have, you know, security to get in there. They're going to go with key fobs because they have multiple keys all over. So I think unless we take no action, I think that's what they're going to do. Um, at Homeland Security today, we were talking about the um, school security bill that um, Governor Baker filed, and there is money for security upgrades. So um, That'd be great. We need it how many, elementary. Tw and 15 or 20 million. So, I mean, it's a $150 million bill in general. Yeah. And there's all kinds of stuff in it. Um, great. So, um, 
I, can we just encourage them to look at it because it might be paid through for that bill? Yeah, and that, I'm and sure the money would be more, available, you know, because it's the budget part of the budget that is effective July 1st. Mm -hmm. So it would be available. So I would just encourage them to before they spend their free cash if they would um, see if that is available. Okay. okay. I was just going to run through. You have a meeting next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And appointments, um, I've got 715, Bob Armstrong and Mark Apadana are coming in to talk about electricity aggregation. Great. Uh, 730, Deerfield Naturals is coming back, is that correct? Yes. And then you would are interested in the 745 to come back to the meeting? Uh, yes, the only thing I was wondering is um, if you thought it might be better to um, reschedule until after the town council has had a chance to um, look at some of the host agreements that that would be a better Leave use that of. between you and the board. Okay. Um, I, I don't yeah. know how it long it probably takes take more sense, but yeah. I don't know how long do it would take her to do it. Would you like me to keep you on and then we'll yeah, see how I would keep yeah. you on. turn around? Yeah. I would see yeah, how I appreciate that. Thank you. Quick, okay. We'll keep you see other things just to let you know what I'm anticipating. Um, more sewer abatements. Um, mm -hmm. I'm oh. expecting a, com a report from the building commissioner uh, is FY18 report on um, activities, on uh, building permits, numbers, that kind of thing, income, etc. I'm hoping to have a couple contracts for you to sign uh, relative to a couple new wells DEP is requiring us to have at the landfill and then um, our ongoing wells monitoring. Um, is this, um, do you know why it's an increase? Is that the letter there that you No, I don't have it, but do you know why DEP um, is required? I don't required? offhand. They must, I don't know. I have it in an email, so, you know, it's scanned in and sent to me, but no. Um, I think I mentioned this early in the meeting. We also need to bring a, uh, to the Conservation Commission for Parcel C, do that non-determination, get on that property for the, that to move forward. And, the sale of that property. Um, what else? I got one more thing. Sure, this won't take long. Um, I wanted to get your advice. Any, anything else you can think of right now that you'd like to see on the agenda? Um, we're getting more, a lot of letters in for Dollar General. We're mm -hmm. collecting things through our office now. Just letting you know that. Mm -hmm. Speaking of sewer abatements, I was. Um, you know, since I was kind of tasked with looking over those and we had this discussion last meeting, um, I was putting some thought into that and talking with Barbara and just to get an understanding of how the bills are produced and sure. how everything happens. So I made, these are my general thoughts and I just wanted to get your advice on them and to get some, some um, discussion going, maybe for, for our next meeting to make a, make a change. So this is policy change discussions for the sewer abatements. Um, as a general rule, the sewer, sewer bills are based on water readings provided uh, gratis by the two water districts. They don't have to give them to us. This is just kind of how we decide to make our bill. Um, these are read twice a year in approximate six-month intervals for South Deerfield and four times a year in Old Deerfield. And Old Deerfield, they're leaders, so they have to do all kinds of conversions, but they've got a system down, and we've got that now. So when we get the readings, um, the clerk's office correlates the data with our users to assign the total usage and then a bill is generated. The bill consists at this time of a rate of ten dollars per thousand, right, gallons, plus a flat user fee of I think it's a hundred. I think we lower. Yeah, do we lower that to ninety or eighty or something 80 like and 90, that? Yes. So that kind of makes up our sewer bill. Um, there are no abatements allowed unless there is an error in the water reading or a meter malfunction stated by the water department. And um, you know the water department sends us a letter and we look at that and. Obviously, we, we follow what they have. If they've got an error, we abate for that. Sure. Um, the winter months at this time have no abatement. The summer months are automatically abated for everybody every year. 25% uh, over, you know, they only get charged 25% over what they've used the previous winter. Right. Um, so no matter if they use 150,000 gallons, they only, get, they only get charged, you know, in their, in, for that 25% more, 125% uh, 25, 25% more of their winter. The residence is not charged. Let's see, I just said that. Um, so they're not charged more than 
the winter usage due to summer watering, filling the pools, washing the cars, you know, whatever it is um, that doesn't go down the drain. Um, so to account for the fact that these activities normally don't enter the, the sewer system and therefore should not affect their sewer bill. This is done for all residents no matter how much the water is used. The issue will arise when clients have a problem or something else occurs during the winter months, which actually begin late September. So which is still dry, still hot, and people are got their water going. So, um, so if a resident installs a lawn um, or irrigation system, it is normally done in the early spring or late fall, just so it's not done middle of summer. Um, if done late fall, it's heavy watering that takes place and therefore affects their sewer bill when, uh, when this water obviously isn't put into the system. Because it is done in the winter bill cycle, there is no automatic abatement. Um, I wanted to put out a thought you know, when people, that we would only abate, and, and maybe this is a question, uh, th well, this is a question, but a thought. Would we, would we take um, a look at doing an abatement if somebody actually installed a lawn, gave a bill, or, um, you know, had some sort of event where they could provide us proof that they've put in a, a lawn after this one September for a one-time event, event. One event and it would yeah. be only based their bill would be no more than 25 percent of their previous um, their previous summer usage or I forget, we'd have to figure that out summer or winter usage I think Barbara had a thought about that but so it was based on their previous usage and it was um, it wasn't just abating whatever willy-nilly and bring it back to the average it's ba based on their previous usage and it's a one-time event for a, a specific installation. It's and not you just because proof, you caught yeah. me this month or that month. The water, the meters get red in September, and they get red depending on when they have time to do it. And it's not the same every year. So, you know, sometimes people are saying that, oh, like, you know, they caught me in my last week of watering. Well, that gets factored in. That is what it is. It's right. we could come up with another system and charge everybody five hundred dollars to have somebody go out and me read everybody's meter, but that would be more expensive. They right. could decide to put on a separate meter reader for their irrigation system only, and what they wash the car with, or whatever it is that doesn't go down the drain. Um, but that's expensive. So we're trying to find the most common usage that the most fair usage to everybody and yes there'll be some on one end some on the other end that aren't accurate just because one bill gets read this year at, at just September 1st and the next one September 15th and you know it was a hot September 1st through 15th and they ran their you know you just can't capture it for everybody unless we want to institute a charge where we'd want to charge everybody an amount to go charge you know to go read everybody's meter so we have to find some sort of policy where you can abate for, for one-time issues when they can provide a bill, and we'd have to base it on previous year's usage, whether summer or winter. I, I'm, I, can't, I don't have that down yet, but that's just kind of discussion I wanted to throw out. And, and I've had similar discussions with many residents about this same topic, and um, I, I, I understand it, um, but I, if we did do that, I think that if somebody was going to install a lawn and they were going to water heavily, I think that we should be notified at the time they're doing it, not six months mm -hmm. after. The Agreed. So then, how do you deal with this guy is putting in a new lawn and he uses a lot of water over here? The guy has got a lawn and he wants to keep it good, so he's well. You know, if this guy's water didn't go down, you need there, to turn and, him off. And now I, I want the same abatement because we both were watering yeah, grass. That's it's a one-time fee. Yeah. It's a one-time abatement. It's yeah. not every year. Yeah. And if we again, if we want, if they don't want to, if they don't want to pay for that water to go down the sewer, they yeah. can put a different meter on. Right. Well, that, that's their I choice. Think, I think that might be a better way. I mean, the meters are—they're not cheap, but they're not thousands of dollars. I mean, you can get a, a, a decent water meter for a couple hundred dollars. Well, the the yeah. abatements are a hundred bucks. Oh. I mean, so people are asking, you know, for all this yeah. for a hundred bucks, and you're going. You know, I just want to get a system in place. And so this wasn't meant to act on. It was just meant to kind of discuss because we have them coming I think we in. Agree. And, I think and there's consensus. The main thing I want to discuss and say in public is that the water department does not need to be harassed for 
I don't mean to say harassed, but asked and asked and asked for the bills. It's yeah. not their job to right. give us stuff so that they can support the sewer right. bill. The sewer bill we institute, or has been instituted before I sat here, based on the most fair way to come up with a system. Now we could decide to come up with a completely different system that people would have issues with too, but the whole thing is that we get these rates from the water department gratis for no charge. Mm -hmm. They give it to the town to allow us to bill. And, and so if we start this issue where everybody's looking for abatement and they want their water usage daily and monthly and weekly, they're going to come up here and hang us. I mean, they're just going to be like, they don't well, have the time for all that. I was just going to say, it will be far more expensive for everybody. They're right. just going to have, have to raise hire, everything. You're going to have to hire yeah. somebody. Yep. This, so, is, true. this is not uncommon. Many cities and many towns have this situation. I think Montague, very similar. I'm hoping that our, our project with um, DPC Consulting will examine this issue mm -hmm. as well as many operational issues, forms, uh, billing, right. uh, the management area, you know, the rates, all that kind of stuff as well, and then the cost issues and who pays and opportunities for grants, all of that. But I'm very much interested in having them talk about, help us, because I yeah. know they've worked in many other communities who've had the same issues. This is not uncommon, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you, so, Trevor, for taking time yeah. to try to figure out something. Well, I just wanted to lay it out to start yep. talking about it because we do have these abatements to look at. And I sure. think, you know, if it's obvious if it's an error and the water department notifies us, then we, we take a look at that. But yeah. we've got to draw a line somewhere. Great. Um, well, that's that's it. It. Is there any comments from the public that would like to make at this time? No? Crickets. Okay. Um, I, I just had a couple things from what sure. we were talking about earlier. Um, you sure. had mentioned um, some um, concerns about training and uh, things to add into a certain Board of Health regulations and I would just say that there are a lot of things that are already required under the Cannabis Control Commission regulations including a program called Responsible Vendor Training. Great. So I would just encourage uh, the Board of Health okay. to yeah. um, look at that. To look Make at sure that, that that's, okay. Perfect. that's good. Are, that's what we're great. looking yeah. to group in. Yeah. 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 So if we've there's, got that already, that's perfect. Yeah, there's just a, there's a lot of things that we're already going to be required to do. So I, you know, I yep. wouldn't want to. Yeah, I don't want to duplicate um, anything you have to do. Or anything and like that's that. and that's sure. uh, and we can just make sure that it's just listed as, you know reference that line in yeah. the yeah absolutely perfect. No, we know. You think? Perfect. It may be in the um, presentation that I went to that I have the PowerPoint. Uh, the um, yeah PowerPoint. I believe I've sent it to you. I finally Correct. got it. So um, detailing some of those things. Okay. It just it just yeah, I mean, every time you turn around, new yeah. regulations. Well, then <laughs> as if, long as they're there, we, I don't want to If we get them and read them, then we can just put one line that says you have to comply with state regulations as well. Yeah. There you go. As we <laughs> had that one line already, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. That's fine. Okay. Great. Sounds good. If that's it. Then. Motion, motion to, to dissolve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. Good night.